Well, another very big hi to all my YouTubers and welcome back once again to Classic Dirt Bike TV as we continue to explore more off-road racers from back in the day. Now in this featured video we're going to take a look at one or two examples of those revolutionary open class motocrossers that were specifically made for your very serious motocross competitors. So I do hope you'll hang around for the next few minutes as we check out some very big, classic, big bore Hondas. Now the first bike we are going to take a look at is Andrew Cleaver's 500 Honda Twin Shock Race Bike. Now straight away you can almost tell that this is not a full-blown original Honda bike but it's uh, actually an example of one of those uh, new breed of Honda race bikes that riders are currently putting together. But basically uh, they take a twin shock Honda frame which in this case is reputed to be an 81 chassis and then uh, what they do is slot in a big bore two-stroke Honda power plant. Now this particular engine is made up from a later model CR500 Honda water-cooled bottom end and uh, then of course all the water works including the water pump is then removed and an earlier air-cooled two-stroke barrel and head are then substituted to give you what is now an air-cooled 500 motor. Now in this particular shot you can just about see where the bike's water pump has been removed and then blanked off as naturally it's no longer required on the new air-cooled motor. But of course removing all the water cooling parts does reduce the overall weight of the bike and subsequently can make this into a very seriously quick machine. But these type of upgrades on these big bore Hondas are now uh, increasing in popularity as many of the faster and more experienced racers are now opting for this type of conversion. And despite the later bottom end being used from a water-cooled Honda, essentially these new hybrids still comply with the laws of open-class twin-shock racing, mainly because they still have a, an air-cooled motor, front and rear drum brakes, and of course twin-shock suspension on the rear. And with the rear suspension you can see that uh, Andrew has fitted a pair of top-of-the-range Olin's piggyback rear shocks on his particular 500 Honda. Another nice Honda part on Andrew's bike is this alloy box section swing arm which actually could have been taken from a later Honda bike and been re-engineered for use in twin shock racing. But this alloy tailpipe will also be a familiar sight to other riders when this big Honda flashes past them but uh, then I don't suppose they'll see it for too long when that uh, big red rocket disappears over the horizon. But nevertheless, although this is a hybrid, it's still a very nice and extremely quick twin choke race bike. Now our second big bore Honda of the day is Scottish rider Archie Beard's, uh, what I think is a 1983 CR480R Honda. Now Archie's machine, as far as I'm aware, is a very good example of one of these 83 uh, 480s and of all the CR Honda race motocrossers that Honda ever built, uh, these 83 models were certainly among some of the best. There was certainly not a lot to complain about when it came to these 83 480s. They had uh, fantastic suspension on the front and rear with plenty scope to adjust compression and damping. And of course uh, this bike also had Honda's well-proven ProLink rear suspension system bolted on 
to that very strong but light alloy swing arm. Although, mind you, the start of this particular show was this awesome two-stroke 480 Honda air-cooled engine. Now, these big bore motors had, had a power band that was ultra-wide and from way down they would pull like the proverbial train and certainly wouldn't stop as long as you held that throttle open. Now, they had a five-speed gearbox, a wet multi-plate clutch and the fuel to feed this uh, speed-hungry monster was fed through a flat-slided Kian carburetor and a V-Force 3 reed valve block. But it's pretty uh, fair to say that these big Honda two-strokers liked a drink when they were doing their stuff on the racetrack, but uh, the price of the fuel was not really an issue as the power that you received in return from the motor was more than enough payback, especially when it propelled you to the head of the pack. But Honda certainly got their sums right when they designed this brute of an engine, and that's why some of the world's greatest riders, including the legendary Danny Magoo Chandler, chose one of these bikes as his number one race machine. Now the engine had a bore of 89mm and a stroke of 76mm and was also fitted with CDI electronic ignition to supply the sparks. And Archie has also fitted a replacement uh, D and G expansion chamber and tailpipe. The control levers on this bike are a pair of Italian made Rikon uh, parts. Now these again are decent quality and are well proven when it comes to durability on the track. Now back in 1983 these Hondas would have been fitted with a pair of 43mm front forks at the factory, although I'm not uh, entirely sure but I think Archie's uh, bike could possibly have a pair of heavier duty items fitted to his bike. And surprisingly enough, uh, still using drum brakes on these Hondas in 1983. Now these Honda CR seats were taken straight from the works bikes of the time and uh, as you can see they extended the front section over the tank to allow the rider to shift his weight forward. Now more evidence of weight saving here again with these magnesium rear brake back plates which of course shed precious grams from the bike's overall total. Now the Honda's Pro-Link swing arm and rear suspension systems was without doubt one of the best of all the big four motocross suspensions in the early 1980s and uh, you had 20 rebound and 12 compression settings on this bike to choose from to fine tune the ride. But uh, having said all that, Archie's particular example is not a fully authentic 83 uh, thoroughbred. It's still, without doubt, a very nice looking machine. But you have to remember that these CR480s were not a machine just to take to the track for a leisurely run around with your mates on a weekend because there were normally only one way to ride these big Hondas and that was flat out because these bikes just begged to be ridden hard and if you couldn't handle what they were dishing out then maybe it was best to look for something a little less frightening. Now our final machine in this big bore Honda video is Cumbrian racer and local motocross legend Mark Fulton's CR480 Honda Hybrid. Now this uh, particular bike is owned by Brian Woods and built by Stuart Bland and of course uh, ridden to many great successes on the track by uh, Mark Fulton. Now the bike's chassis is based on a 1987 CR250 Honda and this particular example has been raced by Mark for the last few years. Now the bike's builder, Stuart Bland, is certainly no stranger to building and preparing racing bikes for the track as uh, 
in the past, Stuart was actually part of one of the British superbike road racing teams which toured the country attending various road racing events in what is an extremely popular series. Now this engine on Mark's bike is actually taken from a 1983 CR Honda and uh, Stuart did all the necessary engineering work to the frame to enable him to slot in this big two-stroke motor. Now the engine's airbox was another one of the parts that had to be custom made in order to get it to fit straight into the frame. Now the fuel for this big 480 motor is fed through a flat slided key and carburetor and a Tassaniri V-Force 3 reed valve block. Now the rather nice looking exhaust expansion chamber and its attached carbon fibre protector was again one of the parts manufactured by Stuart for this particular bike. Now it wasn't an easy part to get right initially although Stuart is very seldom beaten and uh, the final pipe just looks absolutely stunning on this hybrid machine. Now the bike's handlebars are a quality pair of rentals and all the associated front brake and clutch controls are a pair of Intelli levers. Now at first glance this fuel tank looks like it's an original Honda tank although again this uh, fuel tank was custom made to suit this particular race bike. Now I can't tell you for sure if it was actually Stuart who designed and built the tank but uh, it certainly fits this bike to the proverbial T. Now Mark's bike has a nice pair of SM Pro Platinum wheels with uh, Honda's twin leading shoe uh, front brake. Now once again and as in our previous bikes weight saving magnesium brake back plates to just try and reduce that uh, full up overall weight of the finished machine. Now the bike's builder Stuart also manufactured this lovely very strong and fully adjustable rear brake torque arm which is a much better upgrade than on the Honda original. Now as we've just uh, mentioned uh, rental race bars and these lovely in tele lever unbreakable clutch and uh, brake levers. Now to top it off uh, these grips are also made from exotic Kevlar so the quality parts on this bike are just beginning to mount up. Now at the time of filming Mark's uh, bike uh, it was fitted with these very good quality YSS piggyback rear shocks although soon after uh, these clips were taken uh, these were then substituted for a pair of Maxton replacements. Now both the side panels on Mark's bike are taken from a 1982 CR250 Honda and uh, also the front and rear mudguards are uh, from a 1988 CR250. Now some of the smaller items fitted to Mark's bike including all the nuts and bolts and screws and the front wheel spindle are all made from titanium and uh, once again this was to try and reduce the overall mass of the complete bike. So there you have it, just one or two examples of these very quick and unique big bore Honda racers and this very special bike of Mark's has a long list of history race wins under its belt already with uh, hopefully more to come if we ever get back racing. So once again thanks for viewing and uh, stay safe until we speak once again here on Classic Dirt Bike TV. This video was brought to you in association with Wealthsport 
the world's number one supplier for all your off-road, sports and leisure wear. Just visit their online website at wealthsport.com for more details.